Everybody's going to have garbage. Do you focus on your garbage or do you put your garbage in the garbage can and keep moving on with your day? Or do you think about the garbage you put in the garbage can 10 times a day? Oh, that sin thing. That's what it is. If the enemy can get us focusing on the garbage, you know, you go to the bathroom, do you go anywhere and think about going to the bathroom in the morning and how you did it and revisualizing the the video? No, you never do that. Do you ever think about when you put something in the garbage, only if you put something in the garbage you shouldn't have put in the garbage? Do you think about it? Oh my God, what a metaphor. The metaphor of garbage and, and the toilet and the sink. Washing your hands. You wash your hands, you walk away. Do you think about it? Five hours later, hey, I washed my hands five hours ago. No, you don't. But did you do it? Yeah, you did. You washed your hands five hours ago. But do you think about it? No. Now, where am I going with that? Well, I gotta remember where I'm going with that. Garbage in your life. If you're doing the word, you focus on the word. If you're doing garbage, you focus on the garbage. But when you can focus on the word that you're doing in your life and you focus on God's good and you're focusing on the things of God, no matter, you got garbage. You're going to have to take a crap. You're going to have to put stuff in the garbage daily. But you don't focus on it. Where's the focus? Where is the focus? That's what you want to, because the enemy is going to want to get you distracted <clears throat> by telling you you're not good enough. And that's the only way sin can come back in. But if you're in the word of God, if you're actually in the scriptures and it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, and there's no condemnation in Romans 8. And there's power in Romans 8, big time from, oh my God. And so the enemy wants us to be sin conscious. God doesn't want us to be sin conscious because we're righteous. And you only understand that once you get enough truth to know that you don't have to think about sin. You work on your righteousness and you will sin less and less. And that sin, you go, you know, and <clears throat> it's not sin anyway. It's just broken fellowship. But the more time you put in the word towards God and for your love for God to give his word <clears throat> and to have that relationship with God through Christ Jesus, the less you'll be doing the other stuff and the more glory of the word you'll see. Oh, the boys that are in the word all the time and people go, how can they do that? Because it's a discipline unto a world unknown in the physical arena how do you like that the things of god are reserved for the children of god the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them for they are spiritually discerned that is a truth that you cannot get around people are like oh yeah i read the bible three times i'm like oh wow okay are you born again <laughs> Did you get that? Did you get born again? Do you speak in tongues? Do you do what you're supposed to do? Because the power is in what God gave us to do. And reading is supposed to get us to the point where we understand what we're supposed to do. But so I just specif specify my reading to very specific things. And as it branches out, it branches out. And it has to cover it all eventually. But you you, get, you you go from the core out. You don't go from space in. There's, that's too much work. You go from the core out. You get the core first of the word of what you need to know so that you can go where you need to go every time. You got to get the core teaching of understanding uh, right where it's written in the context used before. Yeah, this is all disciplined understanding that God needs you to know. It dispensationalism. Oh, I don't touch on dispensationalism. It's no such thing. Everything has time periods. Everything has a lifespan. Uh, the 
from beginning to end has seven different categories of lifespans and they call it dispensationalism because they want to categorize it because they don't understand how important it is when you get the importance of that down because you want to read what's written directly to you in this administration in this time frame that you are living in i can't do anything when i'm dead in some other time frame i can only live within myself and give while I'm here <laughs> when I'm dead that's it it's over you don't get any more opportunity to live for or against God your thoughts are perished you're you're not gonna think another one and yeah you're not thinking any of the past it's done when you're dead that's why I've got a time frame you've got a time frame dispensationalism your life is a dispensationalism Gee whiz, the span of life, the span time of life is a dispensationalism. You only have so many years to do what you're going to do for or against God on this planet. That's a dispensationalism right there. Ain't that something? So, you want to try to get away from dispensationalism, your life is a dispensationalism. Golly, people. Think outside the box and don't be duped by religion. In the name of Jesus Christ, to God be the glory. Amen.